as House Democrats ramp up their investigations into the president, his businesses, and family. Tonight, the president says former leaders of the FBI, CIA, and other federal agencies that investigated him, he says they're the ones feeling the heat. Now they're all blaming each other, do you see? They're all turning on each other. Isn't that pretty to watch? Now we caught them. They were spying. Okay, joining us live, House Intelligence Committee ranking member, Republican Congressman from California, Devin Nunes. Good to have you with us tonight. Good to be with you tonight. Okay, so let's start with this letter that you sent out. The first time you're talking about it here, you've been trying to get to all the heads of those agencies to say, we want information about Joseph Mifsud. He's one of the characters who figured into the very early origins of potentially launching this whole investigation into the Trump campaign. That's right. So Mifsud is important because he is the first person that we know on Earth that supposedly knows something about the Russians having Hillary's emails. Now, he's since denied that, uh, but Mueller, in his report, claimed that Mifsud was, or insinuated that Mifsud was some type of Russian asset. Well, we know that that's not the case. And in fact, we know that he was in the U.S. Capitol just months into the Russia investigation, just steps away from the House Intelligence Committee. So we sent a letter a few weeks ago. I think the heads of these agencies thought that they were, that we were just going to be ignored. So we sent a follow-up letter on Friday. We've had three of the four agencies get back to us. But surprisingly, guess which agency is not cooperating? I, FBI. Yeah, I can take a guess as to the answer. FBI is not cooperating per usual, uh, which means they've got something to hide because it is impossible that Mifsud, Professor Mifsud, is a Russian asset. He was a former diplomat with the Malta government. He lived in Italy. He worked and taught FBI, trained FBI officials and worked with FBI officials. So your whole point is that there could be very weak, if the case was premised upon him, it's on, it's on weak ground. Now, I want to play something that former Congressman, one of your colleagues, Trey Gowdy, had to say about other information that could be very interesting. Here's what he said. I mean, if the Bureau is going to send an informant in, the informant's going to be wired. And if the Bureau is monitoring telephone calls, there's going to be a transcript of that. But there is some information in these transcripts that I think has the potential to be a game changer if it's ever made public. Okay, do you know what he's talking about? And if so, what can you characterize about these transcripts or what we may ever learn about them? So we have had what we call the five buckets of information that we want declassified. One of those buckets, which I believe uh, former Congressman Gowdy, former Chairman Gowdy is referring to, is exculpatory evidence on Papadopoulos. Uh, that really does need to get out. It's one of many things that need to get out. But, you know, as it relates, he talks about informants there. Now, I don't believe that Mifsud is, is a Russian agent, but I do believe that Mifsud is an agent of someone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that we still don't know, you know, the origins of that. And so I don't know if Trey's talking about that or not, but that is one of the questions that we and have. And it would matter if these agencies say he was kind of the linchpin to getting this whole thing started. Well, look, let's imagine he's not a Russian asset, so let's, let's throw that away, even though Mueller has said that he, that he was. But let's say that he was working for another foreign government, or let's say that he was working for some uh, organization that was hired by an, either a spy agency or a contractor or possibly a campaign. So that's what we're trying to get to the bottom of, is who is this Joseph Mifsud character, because he seems to have a lot of connections with a lot of other people, like Christopher Steele and others, uh, that were involved in the early stages and wrote, of course, the infamous Still dossier. Like are you confident with the three investigations that we know of publicly, the two U.S. attorneys who are looking into the origins, one of them specifically at the direction of the attorney general, and also the inspector general at the Justice Department, are you confident that as those investigations play out, two of them, of the three we hear we may get within weeks, will give us answers about the origin, either clear the FBI or raise some questions about what happened? So I am confident in our investigation that we have done. So we've sent eight criminal referrals to the Department of Justice. Likely we're going to have more maybe later this week. Uh, I do. I'm impressed with the, the new attorney general. I don't know the U.S. attorney in Connecticut, but everyone says that he's going to do a good job. But, you know, I can't really answer that question until we meet with him. We talk about our concerns. But I'm pretty sure once you track down uh, the basically information that we have put together in a nice package, uh, it would be impossible not for you know, for people not to be prosecuted. Well, a Many lot of people. people a lot of people are talking now, and a lot of people seem like they want to get their side of the story out um, before the rest of these reports come. So we'll see, Congressman. Thank you for stopping in. My pleasure. Good nice to chat to with you. you.